Hello, good morning, good evening. Good whatever time, I should be live. Let me know if everything is functioning. Okay. Hello. Let's see how many seconds delay we have this time. Hi, yay. Okay, about, about 20 seconds. So you're looking at me about 15 to 20 seconds time lag. Hello. Dressed up, yes, I, I, yeah. Okay, it wasn't planned. I actually didn't want to dress up, but as I was getting ready, I thought, might as well, might as well. <laughs> so everyone, welcome to the live stream from Avenue X of June, 2022 which is the 36th live stream. Unbelievable, isn't it? Um, on my channel, that would make it close to three years. Although I did live stream a little bit more during Word of Honor. That was definitely exceeding the normal once, once a month. So this is less than three years, but definitely more than two years. Wow, unbelievable, isn't it? We've been doing that for that long. <laughs> And if this is the first time of you catching it, well, welcome. <laughs> and if this is your 36th time catching it, ooh, what can I say? I, uh, I, 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 I just, I so appreciate that. <laughs> Unbelievable, that would be. Like, that would be like only I am that on time, <laughs> on that. <laughs> more on time on that than you, right? If this is the 36th time for you, that would be quite, quite incredible. Lipstick is a problematic thing. You want it not to rub off, but then you also want it to be able to come off, huh? Talking about life and its contradictory elements. So, yeah. I, uh, I'm, I'm very purple, <laughs> purple and green, purple and green go together very well. It's very Tang Dynasty color, but, but not very song. But anyway, this is the best I can do with what I have because this is the only super purple purple I have. I made it myself. Um, everything else is like not super purple. I need to make more purple things. Yeah, and I had this hair, which like this part is 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 a ready-made thing. It's not. I can't do this myself. Too hard. Um, so, hello from everywhere. Brazil. Yeah, a lot of <laughs> countries. Uh, you mean does not bleed over, right? When you say lip, lip uh, pencil. Or do you mean draw like actually over the whole thing? <laughs> Maybe just like bite down on a like tissue or absorb, absorb the oil probably will make it stay better, but then it will be dry. So there's never a perfect solution. And if you use those gel thing, gloss, it's so sticky. If your hair is down and the wind blows, it's all just stick into your mouth. There's no way to get around that. <sighs> no matter how advanced technology develops, I guess that will be a thing that humans are never able to solve. <laughs> hello. So, people from everywhere, hello, welcome to this live stream. It's a monthly stream, nothing special, but we're probably going to talk a couple of things as we go along. I did get an email of somebody asking a specific question about something that's related to a drama, not so related, but still related. That's ongoing or just finished. Can't remember if it's ongoing or just finished. Um, and we're going to talk about that. And if you happen to be here, you know, <laughs> that person who emailed me about the, uh, transporting historical artifacts down south during uh, Second World War in China. If you are here, just shout out so that I know you're here. 
so that I can talk about it when it's the right time. And if you're not here yet, uh, I'll wait for a bit. <sighs> See how the wind is blowing the tree outside? Very windy, but sunny day. Hey, hey, can you see that? I watched this tree grow from a sapling, tiny one, to... Every year I see how much it grows. This year it's doing very, very well. Because we don't have that much caterpillar this year, so almost all the leaves are intact and perfect. Beautiful. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, let me look at what people are writing. Whew. I'm not watching uh, Cookie Monster, what you're talking about. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> uh, da, 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 yeah. Uh, okay, so apparently that person is not here yet. So well, we, we shall see. I'll wait later. If anyone is curious, I can briefly talk about because they did get mentioned in uh, Defy the Storm, the Hui Tian Zhang Ruonan drama. Also, it's partially referred to in the drama Be Reborn with Zhang Yi and Wang Junkai, where they talked about the, uh, the, the cave that, that the treasures are hidden in and how the cave came to be and how it got hidden in the painting. Um, so that's a, that's a really interesting part of Chinese history. Um, there are documentaries made on that whole thing. I don't think there's a dramatic storytelling that's solely focused on the artifacts moving to the south of China during the war. Um, like making that as the leading character of the drama. I don't think there is one, but there are a lot of dramas that would mention it. Kind of, because it's one big part of the history at that time. Very interesting. <sighs> Dream of Splendor, Chen Xiao is dubbed. No, he's not. Who told you he's dubbed? It's his real voice. Can you can't you tell? It, his voice is so distinctive. He smokes way too much. I think he kind of ruined his <laughs> vocal cord to to a point. Right? He does sound like somebody who smokes too much. He should cut down smoking. I think he did. I don't know, but he does sound like a vo vo like he sound he sounds like somebody who who who's got a little bit damage, but then it still sounds good. <laughs> so Chen Xiao, Liu Yifei, um, Lin Yuyun, uh, Liu Yan, Xu Haiqiao. These couple of people all use their own voice. Uh, the the guy who is trying to like the, the definitely not a good guy who's trying to lure Ling Yun's character right now, that guy got dubbed by Wei Chao. Clearly you can tell, because <laughs> Wei Chao's voice is so easy to recognize, but for me. Uh, most of the other people are actually dubbing themselves. So it is a 95% original cast original voice drama. Thirty-three. Well, Germany, uh, don't worry, we're catching up very, very soon. I think by the weekend we're gonna get to thirty-five. <laughs> so we're gonna win. <laughs> Are you watching the murder in Kailote? Right, that's how you would read it out. Um, I watched the first two episodes. I'm very disappointed. I have no idea what they're trying to do. They are advertising it as a mystery thriller detective that type of drama but if you only watch the two episodes and you don't even listen to their promotional sort of like stuff you have no idea that is what you're watching it looks like a metropolis based romantic story that has a little bit of business commercials a big company's power struggle that type of story you you, you wouldn't realize it's a thriller at all and it's only 12 episodes and one-sixth of the drama 
uh, in the first two episodes, basically, and people still don't know what they're watching if they have no idea. You know, they just come in blind. They would not know what you, they are watching. That's a problem for scriptwriter. You should let people know in the first second <laughs> that you are a thriller. Anyway, that drama right now. I only watched the first two, so unless episode three and four suddenly got super good, I haven't had time. I woke up this morning and I sat down and <laughs> tried to get ready with this hair. So I haven't had time to check out um, the episodes yet. <sighs> also, uh, today's Meng Hua Lu is also, yeah, I haven't had time. <laughs> Work comes first. Diligent me. Yeah, they do ADR because for period dramas, it's very hard to get super clean recording on set all the time. You may be able to get like a couple of scenes, but throughout the whole day, there will definitely be parts that's not usable. So you have to ADR yourself and fix and also changing certain lines. If the lines are written, like if there's problems, right? And you need to do post edit and stuff. So they ADR themselves, yeah. Male fairy fox of Liao Jai. I, I've heard about that one. I've heard about that one. I, I've seen it on social media feed. I haven't yet watched it. Chen Xiao smokes. Oh yeah, he smokes like a chimney. <laughs> Anybody who knows him knows that. Um, but I think he quit. Is it due to like the baby that he had? I can't remember exactly, but I know like before that he was a heavy smoker to the point where people really were like, you shouldn't smoke that much anymore. <laughs> You kind of can tell just from the way he sounds and also just, I don't know. When people are heavy smokers, you kind of can tell from their complexion. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, so if you've seen the Be Reborn drama, you know uh, the, the, the the artifacts moving to South thing. I will talk about that some point in this live stream. If that person, like I said, if you show up, just give me a shout, okay? Youth should be early, wow. Somebody is watching that drama? <laughs> I don't know anyone in my immediate circle who's actually watching that one. <laughs> I always, I, everything can still be shipped from my shop. It's just certain things may not be able to get to you trackable. And then certain things are not able to get to you even untrackable with a reasonable shipping unless you want to pay it. If you watch or just go to my shop page and every item has the description that explains how the shipping works. I, this is, this is Canada. <laughs> Yesterday, I just shipped out uh, two orders of the uh, velvet flower mm -hmm. uh, I got recently to Europe and the shipping was insanity. And I actually have to use a courier who take my stuff to a depot and then from there they ship out and that way will be cheaper with all the extra costs that you have to ship it twice basically still be cheaper than Canada Post. Canada Post is absolutely ridiculous. And because these things are 3D, they can be flattened. So there's, there's, it has to go as partial and it's insanity. <laughs> but it's quite fun too uh, while I was doing that. I literally got contacted uh, in my email the other day by, I don't know, probably they searched me on, on YouTube and they found I'm a YouTuber who sells things. And they emailed me and say, I can give you like cheaper shipping from Canada if you live in Ontario. And I'm like, if you've watched my video and you know I need a shipping, then you know I don't live in Ontario. So why do you contact me? Very weird. So I replied, no, I don't live in Ontario, sorry. If, if I actually live in Ontario, I wouldn't need to be so <laughs> uh, stressed out with this anymore because there is alternative shipping from Ontario, even from BC and, 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 and Alberta. 
It's just like Manitoba, nobody cares. This is a no man's land. Nobody cares about this place. And clearly Canada Post doesn't want you to do e-commerce. <laughs> they recently just changed all the rules about how they ship things, which just makes it more expensive. Previously, you can ship it out with $3. Now it's 15. <laughs> Love my life. Uh, crouching tiger, hidden dragon. Do crouching tiger. How, how, how do I do crouching tiger, hidden dragon in Mandarin? Do you mean like read it out? I can ship it to Asia, uh, but, 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 but like, it depends on what it is. Okay. <laughs> trackable would be too expensive. Untrackable, it wouldn't be anything bigger uh, and, and, and in, in shape. So it has to be flat, like paper. So stickers, that type of thing can be shipped, but, but then, then like a really big, like the, the big prints and the, on, the enamel pins that actually has three dimensional thickness can go out now. Because Canada Post just send it all back to me. It used to be like in the past couple of years, it's all good. But now they send it all back. And I'm like, what the heck? <sighs> it's, it's like they're desperate for money. I think that's why. <laughs> Joy of Life Season 2. Everybody is joking about Zhang Ruoyun. Have you seen that on China's internet? If you watch China's internet's social media, it's so funny. He has too many second seasons that he hasn't done. Like Fa Yi Qingming, right? The second season is done by other people. Joy of life, snow sore stride. Now he has the uh, ordinary greatness, which the scriptwriter just came out to say they really want to make a second season. They're thinking about making it. And everybody is like, but Zhong Ruoying is jinxed. Every drama he leads that kind of is looking forward to a second season hasn't happened yet, right? So everyone is like, he has a curse on him, which is when it's him, it's not gonna have a second season. And so, <laughs> well, let's hope it still gets one. Who knows? Maybe, maybe it will be joy of life that breaks that curse for the first time. He, he's got way too many things on his, on his like record of needing a second season. Where is it? Can it be shipped to Africa? Um, well, as long as Canada Post can have it, like if you go on Canada Post website and just check what countries they deliver to, if it's on there, it, it can. But then, if it's to Africa, it wouldn't be sh trackable ones. It would be flat ones, like stick all, all the sticker things and bookmark and those flat things I can send out. But if it's parcel, it's gonna just... <laughs> it's, it's gonna cost more to ship it than the thing that could cost you, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's just... Yeah, well, we're not at the point of human civilization where, where things can just like ship with like instant transportation in space. <clears throat> Are you, <laughs> Laura, do you mean Yu Shuxing instead of Wu? Yeah, she's got a Tang Lan Jue period drama coming up. Ling producing. Yeah, Zhao Ling this time is producing her own drama, so let's hope she has more say in the whole thing, huh? Although I think the more more important thing is ask Ling Gengxin to work out before that, okay? <laughs> but before Zhao Ling can produce it, can we just put Ling Gengxin in the gym for two months, lock him in there and not let him out and just let him work it out before? He, he plays a male lead. I know I'm being cruel, but hey, you, you, this is your fun one, okay? This is your rice bowl. You just treat it with respect. Ah, <sighs> the girl you've never seen. I don't know what that is. That's such a short period of drama. No way it's not. Oh. Depending on how Splendor is gonna air and how well it's gonna do, is it gonna ring? Cause I think it's gonna ring. Um, 
I may do more uh, videos on Song Dynasty culture. Uh, interesting points I found found that they jammed into the story. That unless you know, you don't know what they're talking about. But then if you know, it's fun. They did a lot of those little things, which is really interesting. Also, there's probably a historical figure that's gonna get mentioned later in this drama that's gonna have significant play in the whole thing, and you already see that it's the Empress. Um, if if the drama gives you a version that is too ridiculous, which I I really worry they're gonna do that, uh, I I probably will make a video called "In the Reality versus Drama" series talking about that specific empress who is just one of the most interesting emperors in Chinese history. Her, her sort of life is, is beyond dramatic thinking. If you're a scriptwriter, you write a queen or an empress like this, people are gonna say you totally made it up, it's impossible. But she made it happen, it's real and she's so cool, unusual, one of the most unusual empress in Chinese history. Uh, if the drama does it really weird, okay, <laughs> it depends on how they're gonna play it out. I probably will make a video on that, but I'm still waiting for them to air to that point where you can see the drama version of it, and maybe they are not gonna go so against the history, I don't know. But right now it smells very, very tricky and dangerous with, with where the angle is going. I hope they don't, but hey, wouldn't be surprised. Binary love. I've watched it until episode twelve. Haven't haven't caught it up. Yeah, uh, is it good later? I mean, these two really play a very good chemistry. I think both Ren Youlun and Zhong Dafei are very good at acting. That kind of contemporary normal people, you know, <laughs> that, that that the relaxed way of acting. They're both very good. But the story is a very campus sort of a university campus young adult love story that has nothing special about it. Apart from it, it's pretty enjoyable. Yeah, you know, if, if you're saying, is there an extra selling point of that drama that's unusual and not like any other things? Not really. It's enjoyable. If you like those two, you're gonna like it. But it probably wouldn't be a page turner type of drama. It's like while you're watching, you like it, but when you turn it off, you don't quite think about it afterwards. And that's how it's worked for me. I don't know for other people. If it's like fully done, I, I probably will go back and just run through the rest of the drama, see what happens. <laughs> my friend is saying she should take off your glasses. I'm like, no. Actually, if I do take off my glasses, I wouldn't look as good as I have my glasses on. I know that. I've done temp. I've done totally dressed up camera test with different focal length mm -hmm. talking with and without my glasses. I've done that extensively and I know I have to wear glasses to look better. Hey, it's just me. This is my, this is my ben tea. Glasses is my ben tea, okay? <laughs> if any people understand Chinese, you know what I mean. Yeah, their costume and makeup look very, very gamey. Like it's like um, it's very like much like a, like almost like a cell phone game. You know how they design those characters with those crazy hair and ornaments. It doesn't. It kind of moved a little bit beyond the normal drama look. And with that kind of makeup, I'm like, honestly, I have to say, I I just like really respect male actors. Because female actors, they usually don't have to wear the full wig. They just wear half of the attachment pieces. Whereas guys, they have to just have everything glued to their skull. And that white hair looks intense. It wouldn't be comfortable for him to wear it for like 15 hours a day <laughs> for a month or two. And I was like, it looks interesting, but I, I can get, like, I guarantee you he's suffering under that. <laughs> Student. <laughs> wow, somebody, somebody's name is student. That, that is just such an interesting name. 
to have on internet. Who rules the world at the end, like when they fight at the palace? You know, when they are like destroying buildings, destroying pillars, destroying like the... the, the it's like it's like missile hitting the, the architecture and exploding. That part is just so funny. It's, it's, it has moved beyond any Chinese dramas previously in terms of like, let's just be ridiculous with CGI and see how far we can push it. <laughs> It, it turned it into a comedy. Um, so who rules the world? The fighting scene, you know, if you watch uh, the last bit, you know, sticking, sticking a cannonball with a sword and, and, and literally having those like missile uh, <laughs> explosion over the <laughs> palace structure. I feel so bad actually for everybody who actually signed a contract to play that. I hope they get paid well. And they probably did, so I wouldn't really feel bad for them, but it's so ridiculous. Like imagine that on your portfolio. <laughs> it's mid-ear drama review oh, too much work <laughs> don't have that much slot for that many slots for things i'll just push it through and see the end of the year and pretty much everything i've watched i've talked about if not in individual videos probably i've mentioned them already in live streams um best cp so far well, I like the under the skin, but it's not really a CP, right? Because they don't officially really call it a CP, but I really do like the dynamics of the two leads. And then probably, probably Dream of Splendor. Reset is okay, but Reset is just so light on romance. They barely touched it with one scene or two, and it's so short. And there really is a full, like, like you can't say they're, they're, they're pretty nice, like Bai Jingting and my but it's not heavy on that at all right it's barely touching it so um mm, it's okay um but but not significantly so memorable for me for me it would be under the skins um the, the yeah that's how they're called in china right now uh splendor is called gu pan sheng hui so it hasn't become a tradition on China's internet, when you have a drama, you have a CP, people make up names for them, usually working off their name, their character name, and try to pull a Chinese idiom existing or, or referencing literature um, and then work it into it. Uh, it just happens to be this Dream of Splendor's two leads name really work well into Gu Pan Sheng Hui. And it's just, <laughs> it's just such a clever way of working that language. Because the male lead surname is Gu. Gu as a character itself means a way of looking at something. Or, t uh, or pay attention to something or look at something. And then female lead's given name is Pan. Or Pan means expect, uh, waiting for something with expectation, uh, waiting for it, anticipating, uh, wanting something. So... There is an idiom that already exists in Chinese called Gu Pan Sheng Hui, which, um, because Pan has the looking for idea too, so if both characters have the idea of look, then Gu Pan Sheng Hui as, a, as an idiom um, is used to describe somebody who is so pretty and their eyes are particularly attractive that, that when they look, like their eyes move when they look, it's like they glow. So, for used usually to describe a beautiful woman who whose eyes are so pretty like they, they like when she looks at things it's like light comes off her so that is an, an idiom and it happens to perfectly work for these two characters names and then it also has that beauty idea of looking beautiful woman which yeah <laughs> if you're not blind you agree she is very pretty so that now is the CP name in China, which works very well. <laughs> and, 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 and since the male lead is completely constructed by
by the scriptwriter, not based on anything. I, I, she might did it like, who knows? She might, when she was writing it, uh, purposefully named the male act uh, character with that surname so that people is gonna put it together in that way. Uh, could be, cause it, cause literally the Gu Qianfan character can be anything. It could be Li Qianfan, he could be Meng Qianfan, does not matter because it's made up, it's not based on anything. So, could be that the scriptwriter did it intentionally, who knows. <laughs> Chinese BL drama. Your guess is as good as mine, I have no idea. They may come out, they may never, and who knows? <laughs> Autumn Ballad, I watched it a little bit, I didn't like it. <laughs> I think in a way, it's um. Okay, it's production quality is just too... Mm, the color grading is... Mm, you know, eyesore uh, in, in many ways. And, and they're so... Like, I have to feel... I can feel a little bit sorry for the production because they're so poor. Um, their costume of the drama... Like, 90% of the costumes that you see the, the char lead characters wear were bought off Taobao. And Taobao's Hanfu store, so like this, like you get from Taobao. 90% of the lead characters' costumes were bought off Taobao and mixed match with all dynasties, with all different types and styles. That's why it doesn't look coherent and it looks weird at times. And it's like in the same family, same thing, different people are wearing different dynasties. And it's because they bought it off Taobao, like most of them. There is actually an um, a video that actually dig out most of the costumes that the leads wear, which shop and which year the costume come from. Like they literally collected that over the years of Taobao's famous Hanfu store. <laughs> and it's, and they and they mix it. So for example, this set of costume that has five pieces comes from this shop this year, and that comes from that shop that year, and they pick one part of that that and pick one part of this and put it together on a, like on different yeah it's it's so sad so if a drama cannot make their own costume it, they have to actually buy ready-made ones off Taobao you know how poor they are <laughs> it's it's like it's pretty much like how you like I would do it because I have no money if I have to go and make a drama now with what I have I would have to resolve to that too because for proper production, they would have a factory that they work with, like the production uh, hires a costume designer who's worked in this industry for a long time, so they know pretty much everybody in the industry, in which city, which location, there is a factory that can do how many costumes in a day, and I actually know the head of the factory who knows how to do it, and then who can, like if I order certain things, they can give it to me, they understand my drawings, if I have specific requirement of certain designs, and they know how to do it. Like that's a whole chain. And usually for proper uh, costume, um, for proper drama, they would hire a proper costume designer who has this relationship with the factory and they would literally make most of the costumes that are leased for the leads for the main supporting roles um, in that factory. And then for the, a lot of like w people walking on the street, extras, they would go to some places to either rent or if the production company is big enough, they have their warehouse that they've done previous works, they've had costumes from other dramas, they've stored up and they take it out and put it on, you know, like random passes by on street. So that's how usually that works. And any production that's a proper production would make designed costumes for their lead characters specifically. And if, if that doesn't happen, that just means this production has no money <laughs> at all. So sad. T 
till the end of the moon. Yeah, it looks pretty. We, we shall wait and see if the drama is good. Song of Youth is good. Yes, it's not hundred percent accurate, and sometimes they do weird things. It's like they've done ninety percent of replicating Ming Dynasty, and then they just leave that ten percent wrong, which makes it very weird. Um, but overall, it's pretty good compared to other things. One of the better ones we've got. Um, although, like you know, it's always if you want to be very accurate, there's always things to pick at. Um, the the royal feast is also some of the costumes are very well done, some are not so. So it's always a mixture. <sighs> Emails coming in. Uh, Chinese novels too. Chinese novels. Is there any good ones? I don't read that many novels. If you have to ask, I probably will talk about old ones, like many, many decades ago ones. The recent good ones, I have no idea. Chinese musical drama, that's a hard thing. Aren't that many musically talented actors out there. There are, but there are not that many, and you have to put them all together in one thing that actually is suitable for each and every one of them to play, which is also very hard. And the recording would be very hard too. It's it's gonna be different from normal drama recording. Mm -hmm. A lot of challenges. Not saying it's impossible, but we need some like genius to come and save the day. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, I'm gonna briefly say something uh, about something uh, that's like I earlier I said I'm gonna talk about it uh, just in case later people come across this and ask about it. Um, it's in a couple of dramas recently and it's interesting and I'm actually waiting for a drama that would actually focus just on this because it's an incredible story that happened during the Second World War in China. A little bit before and after that. Um, which got mentioned in Define the Storm, kind of, because that's focused more on the Jia Gu Wen, the ancient Chinese scripture written like thousands of years ago on the back of the tortoise uh, shell, um, that that was important to the cultural heritage. It got mentioned in Define the Storm, that's led by Hui Tian and Zhang Ronan, and that does have something to do with all the artifacts, historical. Uh, treasures getting moved to south during the war, then be reborn. At the end of it, you know, like all the bad guys want to get is this location of this secret cave that supposedly had craters and craters of priceless stuff that got left there during the whole movement of moving things down south during the war. And so that's a part of the plot. And people did ask me about that, um, which is a very important thing that happened in Chinese history. Um, it's in the mid 1930s when a Japanese have already started invading China that at the time the government, which is the Mingguo government, decided we're gonna pack up everything we have in Forbidden Palace, which at the time Forbidden Palace is already a museum of hundreds and thousands of years of like collected stuff by the royal family and stuff and, and the imperial family and then stored there. Paintings, China, uh, incredibly precious historical things that I can think of, all kinds of. And they were like, if we get invaded and Japanese took it, <laughs> you know, we are, we're not gonna let the Japanese destroy it or take it away, so we're gonna have to hide them. Within half a year, they packed up, the number is pretty insane over mm -hmm, how many okay, craters let's see over 13,000 craters 
for half a year with cotton, with paper, with all kinds of protection so that things don't get broken. And they pack all the things in those craters and start to ship them down south China and in different teams to put it like further away from the invasion of J Japan. And this whole thing continued on for years with a lot of people involved. It stopped at many different locations. There are many stories about it, which is quite incredible, like almost miraculous stories. Like, like you have something hidden and the Japanese were dropping bombs and everything got bombed, but that building, but that one building got survived and things didn't get like, like there are a lot of stories that happened during the, the couple of, about a decade really of those things moving around in China everywhere. At the end of the war, parts of that got taken to Taiwan with the Kuomintang's um, <coughs> retreating army. And so now they are in the Taipei, Gugong Bo Yuan, the Taipei uh, Gugong Museum. Then uh, the rest gradually returned, like from every southern location in China in the years after the war and uh, the founding of the People's Republic got moved back to Beijing stuff. So, so the traveling uh, historical paintings, China, all the precious things, and the people guarding them and over a decade story of that is in itself incredible uh, thing. And there's yet to be a drama that just fully focuses on this one thing. That would be really, really cool to film and to tell. Um, it often get mentioned in dramas that are set in that time, but in terms of 100% just focusing on, not really and I'm breaking off a little bit. So if you're seeing me getting frozen on screen, sorry about that. <sighs> and not love never lost. Yeah, it looks like it's gonna come soon, hey? I want that one to be good too. But it's gonna be very depressing because it's Mingguo. It's revolution. It's, this is just not gonna end well for most of the people. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> when you see People's Republic, okay, you're like, ah, 90% of the Chinese people are not gonna get a good ending. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty sad time. But it has Li Xian, Zhou Yu, Chun Xia, Zhu Ya Wen. Definitely, definitely worth watching. <laughs> um, <sighs> Zhang Yan, Wang Junkai, really? That's a CP? <laughs> Is that a CP? Ming Guo drama, a couple of good ones. Bei Ping Wu Zhan Shi, probably the best. Um, if you haven't watched it, there's no war in Beiping, right? I don't know if that's the English translation. It's the best. Recent years, at least. Qian Fu is really good, espionage drama, many years ago with Sun Hongwei and uh, Yao Chen. That's also set in Mingguo, uh, one of the better ones. Hongse is pretty good too. Um, if you're looking at things that are less focused on espionage, <laughs> Love high high romance would be Lai Bu Ji Shuo Wo Ai Ni, uh, high 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 romance with Zhong Han Liang and Li Xiao Ran, uh, to like <clears throat> what's the English title? I can't remember. Um, uh, anything else? Mingguo has too many dramas, but usually it's either just big family saga or or uh, espionage, and then about war against Japan, usually those are the things. I mean, My Roommate is a Detective is enjoyable, but it's by no means the best drama out there, for sure not. Although I do look forward to Zhang Yunlong and Hu Yitian's new one that should come sometime this year, hoping, because it's already done, you know, just waiting for it, that that detective drama again, that's set in Harbin during Mingguo. <laughs> it's, they also look almost identical in that drama as what they look like in My Roommate but it's a totally different story. <laughs> so that one I look forward to. Um, anything else, Mingguo? 
Yeah, these couple couple ones that are good. <coughs> what dramas was biggest disappointment for you lately? Disappointment. Hmm. Is there a significant disappointment? I mean, disappointment means you have expectations first, and then it doesn't meet it. Well, right now, the first two episodes of the murder in Kailaute is very disappointing, but I have no idea what happens later. I only watched the first two episodes. I haven't watched the three and four that already aired that I haven't had time to check out yet. <clears throat> that one definitely is not what I expected. Would like It's really awkward, that drama. I, I was looking at it most of the time with that face. Who wrote this? What? Why would you do that to a thriller drama? Hmm? <laughs> being a hero? Being a hero is... Being a hero cannot be aired right now because it didn't go through censorship. I think it's like two rounds of censorship already and still <laughs> it's like it's not... It, it didn't pass. So it got sent back, edit, edit, cut things out, change things and then... So it's still in that process. Uh, for this type of drama, it's always tricky. One is how you portray the police. And the other thing is certain things cannot be shown on camera or in dramas. If it's related to like anything they consider to be, we should not put that out in public, you know, in terms of how we operate. We don't want the, the bad guys to know, you know? So when it concerns very serious matters like anti-drug thing in China and in police work, if there's a lot of problems, it's just gonna get heavily edited. Therefore, that drama <laughs> has, been, has been around for how long and still we're waiting for it. Unfortunately, that's just, that's just how it is. So, yeah, I would love, I would love the Chen Xiao and Wang Yibo drama to come out now. It'd be great, but... Oh, also, the Chen Xiao, Mao Xiaotong, period drama. Is that a genius? Something genius? Ingenious, the ingenious one, I think. That's what it's called. Uh, period drama, Yun Xiangzhuan. Looks really good. <laughs> like, it's trailer, the style, and how the character is. I can't always, I think that one, in that drama, he looks even better. He looks even better, Chen Xiao, than what he looks like in Spen Dream of Splendor. And he plays a character who is totally 柔弱不能自理. In that drama, he's a character who has no kung fu, who is a scholar, who is very weak, who, who gets beaten up. Like he doesn't beat other people up, other people beat him up, but he is like Mei Chang Su level clever in that drama. And he got princess carried by Mao Xiaotong. So in other dramas, it's him princess carrying the female leads. And in Yun Xiangzhuan, it would be Mao Xiaotong, the female lead, princess carry him. Girl, you've got muscle. But also, I just cannot wait for, for the moment in the drama. Like, the drama hasn't aired yet, but I cannot wait already to just see that. I can't imagine Mao Xiaotong, the tiny girl, holding Chen Xiao in her arms. <laughs> I, come on, give me that. I can't wait. I cannot wait. Dramas that don't get aired, uh, one day they may air. Like 10 years later, that could happen too. You never know. So live long. Important to live long. Uh, see drama new face? No, I haven't. And there are a lot of dramas I haven't watched. I, I try my best, but there's only that much, that much time I have and hours I have. Particularly now, I, need, I, ha I, I, I have a couple of drawings in my head I really want to draw um, for Meng Hua Lu and it's going to take too much time, so it's, uh, I wish I had 48 hours, but I don't every day. Street dance. Yeah, yeah, street dance. And the new one is coming, hey? I just heard of Arsenal Army. I have heard about it. I haven't watched it. <laughs> Daybreaker. I probably will make a video on it. Yeah, probably. That drama is... 
生不逢时。That's how I would call it. First is 生不逢时 It's kind of born at the wrong time, basically airing at the wrong time. Then, then I have to say whatever they did with the promotion, or whoever they hired or not hired for promoting that drama is so bad at doing their job. They shouldn't get paid. They shouldn't get paid. They should get sued. They're they're just so not getting it、uh, in terms of how to promote it on social media and how to how to ah.、Uh, And then the drama itself has problems that makes it very unlikely to blow up. You know, when you think about dramas that have blown up, <laughs> got really popular, they there have there there's like a type of formula or certain things you have to do in certain ways to make it work on a large scale. Unfortunately, oh, are we talking about Daybreaker? Yeah, Daybreaker. Yes, Daybreaker is a drama that just just doesn't have that natural makeup. That can make it blow up, but it's actually not bad. But then, if people don't quite want to watch it, or they don't get it, or they, it doesn't attract that much attention. I understand why. I understand why. It has many, many things that that didn't do quite, quite right for the purpose of getting super popular. Basically, it's not saying it's a bad drama, but it may not be the type of drama that can. She and her husband. I haven't watched that yet. <laughs> oh, she and her husband. It hasn't aired, right? We're not talking about that one. We're talking about that one. You see, like the English name is so confusing. It's becoming so mainstream. What do you mean by mainstream? I don't think it's becoming mainstream. I think it's becoming crappy overall. That <laughs> just don't use mainstream. Mainstreaming can be very good. Mainstream stuff can be very very good, but crap is crap. <laughs> do you have any update on Chris Wu? Oh yeah yeah. Last last week, right after I I actually filmed my video. News came out, right? So it's right after that. Um. Well, the case has started basically in court. Usually, that means within a month you should hear the final verdict. Usually, okay. So from that point onwards, we're probably gonna hear it in July in terms of how it all ended, what it involves. It definitely involves multiple people, not just him. In July, so it will be an exact one year in terms of how this thing blew up, which blew up in June last year, and he got arrested at the end of July last year. So now it's a year, a whole year has gone by. Pretty much, I think in July you're gonna hear some final thing about it. Exactly what we have to wait because it's um, it's not a public hearing、uh, because it concerns privacy, so of certain people because it's a rape case and stuff. So. Uh, you're not gonna, you're gonna not see any videos from from the court, but they're just gonna tell you at the end how it's all worked out. So let's wait till July. It's not done. He he he's not in prison for the year. He's just Julio. You know, <laughs> it's a different thing,、um, and probably it has gone through many many、um, so different. Cause cause. There are actually law experts. I think I've watched videos online explaining the procedure and time it takes for certain things to work, and they're saying if this case starts in June, and since since July end of that means how many how many pro procedure has gone through, and you can kind of guess by the timing that、um, what this case involves, because if it's a super simple case that just involves himself. It's gonna take much less time than what it has done for almost a year now, and then because of the limit of timing, like how you move pol like from police to the prosecutor office, then to the court, there's a limit of how much time can be unless certain things happen, unless the case involves another case which involves another person, and you have to go investigate that, and so there there's a limit of how every step can take, how long every step step can take. 
and there are people who are guessing based on the numbers of months and days um, that this whole thing has has been going on for almost a year. It just means it involves more than just him. That's why it's so long. So, <laughs> yeah. And and in the uh, announcement that came out last week, it's not only he. Uh, it's not only the rape case, but also there's one thing called 聚众引乱, which means three and above. So it involves that kind of action that involves three or more people. So it's a different crime as opposed to just rape. It's another thing, which is you have multiple people involved in that kind of action. So, so he is in court for these two. That means there are more people involved. So it's not just him. Probably that's why it takes so long. Hmm. And, and if this thing finally gets publicized, it's not just going to be his name in it. It's going to involve other people's name and probably some older, more well-known people in the industry. So that's why this, is, <laughs> this thing is yeah, waiting for it to happen, huh? We, we shall see who's going who's gonna to yeah, there, there are a couple of people who are, who are very... <laughs> right now, people are like guessing. Probably it will involve this guy and that guy. You know, who knows? Entertainment business. Stay away from it. If you are actually not a power player in it, just stay away. It's just so messy. <sighs> Maybe. How do you know I'm Mei Mei? What if I what if I'm older than you? Um, what dynasty? Well, generally speaking, I would say this is like song. This is song, very song. Um, but I have this thing made that I'm not saying that. Um, you can also say this is song, but it's tongue as well. It's just a half sleeve that really can be put in any dynasty. Pretty much every dynasty has a version of the half sleeve thing. So. You can say that, but the dress, like the skirt, is probably song. Yeah, it's more song. This is more song, <laughs> but it's a version of the song skirt um, that for sure existed in history. As for Tang, still needs to do a little bit work on exactly how they did the skirt back then. Yeah, historical stuff. But but this is pretty song. It's like ninety percent song, ninety five percent song. What best clothes? There is no best clothes. There is just ones that suit you or not. Because different styles tend to suit different body shape, I would say. So there wouldn't be one that's perfect for everybody. Honestly, if you, if you ever just try to research into Chinese historical costumes, you'll see that. Um, certain things work better on certain other certain people. Yeah. For example, like, like Liu Yifei, Song really suits her. Tang probably wouldn't suit her as much. Tang style probably wouldn't suit her as much. Ming probably would be okay. Jing probably would also be okay. But Tang is the Tang's style really is more suitable for the more flamboyant person. The heavy color, high contrast, the Fan Bingbing type of people, you know. So depending on like body shape. Um, and your overall aura, like what your aura, you know what 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 suits you better. Well, did people in ancient China dress like dramas? Oh, think about commoners. They first wouldn't have all the silk and stuff. They would just have, for most of the time in Chinese history, uh, stuff made of hemp, and then later after. After it got to late Song, Yuan, Ming, it started to have cotton. Really from Ming Dynasty on, cotton becomes more important. Um, and, and, and then really for poor people, they can't afford silk. So linen, really that type of fabric would be more common. And imagine what you can do with that. <laughs> There's only that much you can do because the quality of the fabric itself limits the possibilities. And then for people, they wouldn't have very big sleeves because they have to work, you know, you have to do work and you, you can't work in like super long sleeves or super long skirt. They probably will be shorter. Uh, and then 
often very dull color because dye color like purple would be super expensive. Usually you can't afford that. Even if you're a rich person, you wouldn't have everything in purple. It's too expensive. All that considered. So historically, normal people would wear much less pretty clothes unless they're, they're, they're um, really rich or like they work in certain professions like the um, uh, Song Yinzhang character who is like the official prostitute. I know it sounds ridiculous, but it's it's like direct translation. Guan Ji, they would their job is to entertain people, so they're always dressed up. They're they're like the performer, right? So depending on who you are, really. But for like you would, and for most of the Chinese, like like even in Dream of Splendor, in terms of the costume, it's not very accurately recreating Song look. It takes elements of it. Particularly on main characters, it actually does a lot of change to give them specific look and that they think is suited for the character. And if you look at certain extras who have specific like purpose of a drama, not just walking on the street as backgrounds, but actually have important purpose for a scene, they tend to actually dress more like the typical Song people. For example, the pipa player in one in one part of the drama where she is playing, you see the shot moving up and then um, it goes to the plot where she competes with Song Zhang. That woman's clothes and hair and even makeup is like 90%, 95% accurate to history, which I think they got um, historical because this drama did hire one of the persons who also is on the team of uh, Assassin for Tang Dynasty, I saw the interview of his. So that woman as an extra, who is a real pipa player, she is dressed very, very soon. There's also episode four and five, when Zhao Pan Er went to uh, trick Zhou She into giving up the marriage. She is dressed up as the courtesan level, super pretty. And she hired uh, a, a, a sort of a prostitution, sort of the brothel owner woman to to make up everything for her, right? Do you remember that scene where they paid that woman and there are a couple of ladies standing there and getting the money and saying thank you, that scene? Those women are dressed very, very soon, like accurate to everything we know today in terms of historical looks of Song Dynasty. Even the, the girls who are training in the um, jiao fang, in the jiao fang, when Song Yinzhang took her pipa in, in Dongjing for the first time, all the girls who are dancing with the red ribbon on their head, that look is very song. It's like super song. Um, so almost, I think it's for the not so important, but having a little bit of special sort of character than the background people in Dream of Splendor actually gets the most accurate to historical artifacts, some costumes, then the main leads and then the lesser important people. At least so far with the 20 episodes, I can see that's how they're doing it. So some of the Wii face costumes are pretty, but it's like totally, totally just not so, not even Chinese ancient at all, because they have literally 3D cutting. They do the darts, they do the, uh, like the breast actually has this type of cutting that is Western and contemporary. So that follows the curve of your body that never existed in Chinese history for any, any historical uh, dynasties. Chinese historical costumes are all flat. Like the cutting of it is 2D. You lay it flat, it's one piece on the ground. There is no sort of digging out a part and then sew it up again so that you, you follow the shape. It doesn't work like that for Han Fu. Han Fu is all flat, 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 all the way. <laughs> so, so whenever you see that, that line, right, of her, like the, 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 the sort of like her top that has that line that follows the breast, it's, it's not Chinese, but it's, it's, it's for the pretty sake, you know. <laughs> Yeah, the feet thing started in Song, but it didn't got popular until Ming Qing. So from Ming and Qing, it started to get popular. Qing is particularly bad, you know. But Song Dynasty is not yet having that work uh, in, 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 in practice very commonly. 
Certain people do it, like dancers do it, so that their feet look smaller and prettier, but not to the level where it actually deforms your feet. After series, I've said, if anybody is still asking, I've said multiple times, I'm not doing them for now. Because people disappear too easily. And I, I'm afraid to jinx people. That's why I don't do it anymore. <laughs> How do you know costumes? Well, no, you don't get taught in history. <laughs> you just learn it yourself. I, I've been in this, like I've gotten into touch with this whole thing for 15 years. Back in 2007, that was when I first had anything to do with ancient like costume recreation, historical research. So it's a long time and just over time, you know, you, you, you see things and you kind of, and the more you see, the more you get the feel of how naturally things develop over time. So certain looks make sense to exist for certain time and certain just does not at all because there's nothing else like that at that time. And there's no way it just came out of nowhere. Um, over time, you, you kind of get a feel of, of um, historical costumes. Yeah. Not intentionally going anywhere to study, but if you want these days, there are a lot of places you can look for really reliable material sources. Over the last 15 years, people have done a lot of work, research, um, and, and paying more attention to it. Previously, not that many people really care about it at all. So it, it's not like the materials and information is not there. It's just people don't really go dig it out or organize it, categorize it, you know, like that. But now a lot of people do it. So it becomes more and more, uh, the information is easier to get now. The timeline of Song Dynasty. Okay, so this, um, the drama's version Splendor is set around Song, Zhenzong, Bei Song, first is North Song. And then right now, like the drama is like taking, taking time around the end of that Empress rule, if I haven't remembered it wrong. That guy is the third emperor and he uh, died in 1022. So, um, we are looking at probably 1020s or 10 tings, 10 tings, like a thousand and year 15 to like a thousand year 22. I don't know, or roughly around there. That's, that's what the drama is setting in terms of the emperor, who the emperor is. Thank you for super chat. Chun Ming, ah, it's you again. I know this name. Hey, I've seen you before. How are you? Keep it up. I'll try my best to keep it up. Um, so that was the uh, the third emperor of Song Dynasty, and that's Zhen Zong, Zhen Chu. Okay, that's his um, Miao Hao. Um, da -da -da -da. But it did actually use a couple of other things that happened later in history. Certain certain poem, for example, that's got reference that should happen later, a couple of decades later. So it, it mixes it, but it's mostly North Song and Zhenzong period. And this this emperor uh, <laughs> ruled around 997 to 1022. 25 years on the throne, yeah. You know, handbook and handfu thing is like, just look at history, you know. <laughs> Why people need to argue about that, you know. It is what it is. Historically, you know, it came from this, it got this influence, and now it's like that, and it's like two different things. <laughs> it just, just look at record and history and no, no need to argue about that. It, it's like, it's like people, you know. <sighs> I find it funny, like in the West, like for example, in Britain, um, when they make dramas these days, when they talk about Tudor's time, they ask 
a black person to play a character in there. Whereas like, but historically that person isn't like, but we want to be politically correct and diverse, but, but you're talking about history, you can't rewrite it. <laughs> You know, it just like, for example, one of the Shu Song Zhen Zong, he's a Chinese person. You can't just have, give him blonde hair and say, well, we want a diversity. It's just like, well, but do it now. You know, I don't have a problem with you make a contemporary drama of all kinds of people, like just include all ethnicities in the whole world and play a drama. You know, does not matter because it's possible to happen now. Whereas like a thousand years ago, like that people, like, huh? Can we just be scientific about things and factual? That's all I need, you know? So, <laughs> is it, can, can you just look at history? If it is, it is, you know? Like, like you don't have to feel, I have, like somehow, <sighs> I am obliged to change history because I prefer certain versions. It's like, what, why? Yes, they are your ancestors vaguely in the history. I mean, honestly, I have like what? A millionth or, or a hundred millionth blood of the Song Dynasty royal family because my mother is Zhao and her family really like they have family tree that can trace right back to Song Dynasty Emperor. They really are descendants of Song Dynasty Emperor. So what? It's a thousand years ago. You have just as much imperial blood as any random person walking on the street in China. It's only that because you have that family name, it got kept so you can trace it, but it doesn't mean other people don't have it. And so, so like, yeah, uh, you know, so, so the whole thing about that is like, people feel so, so attached to, to like a particular whatever in history. I'm like, oh, it has nothing to do with you really. For all I know, you know, your last life may be spent on an alien planet as a tree. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's very confusing for 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 current certain actions in, in the world, and yeah. it's just like how 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 politically correct that that like Disney, Pixar, all all the film studios in Hollywood have gotten to the point that a lot of people working there were like they want to quit. I've heard people telling me that. It's like, it's too ridiculous. We have to concern this and think about that and put this in and that in. I'm like, I can't create anymore. And it's like, this is stupid. All my energy is spent on analyzing my self-censoring if I'm being politically correct all the time. Ugh. Yeah. Good luck, you know. <laughs> when we get a super bug that comes, everybody dies. There's no difference. It does not matter what ethnic background you have, what racial background you have, you know, get a meteor, hit earth, we all die, we all burn in the same way, carbon, and hydrogen, and oxygen, that's what we are, we're all gonna turn into ashes, and it's the same chemical element, nobody is more special than the others, oh yeah, anyway, <laughs> don't get me started, I look at the whole thing, I'm like, ah, planet earth is so weird, I want to go back to Mars, <sighs> Chen Xing Xu new drama? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. He 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 he's like in everything considered, he should be more popular, but he just isn't, right? Weird. No, not all Chinese speak Mandarin. Most Chinese people cannot speak very standard perfect Mandarin. They would have their local dialect accent mixed into it. Unless they are trained or they do a job that's specifically related to speaking perfect Mandarin. Most people aren't perfect Mandarin speakers, but they're getting like the bigger the city that you live in, the more metropolis like and younger you are, you tend to have a more accurate and perfect accent of Mandarin due to education and everything. The older you are, the more remote places you come from, <laughs> you probably can't speak it. That's, that's, that's what it is. Once it gets when once the talk gets political, it's just a mess. It's just a huge mess. Right. Can you do different accent? I only know Chongqing accent. 
perfectly. Other accents, I, I can't quite do it well. I, I also can tell, like I understand fully the Shanghai dialect, I don't speak it. I, I can speak a little bit, but I, I, I'm really not good at it. Um, but I understand it fully. Um, that's about it. Not, 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 like I don't, but I can tell, you know, roughly if you start speaking, w roughly which part of China you come from. Like south or north or west or east. <laughs> How many dialects? I don't know. You should go and can research that. Probably people have con uh, in the numbers between tens and hundreds. Because there are so many different places, they would all have their accents, right? But it's not the different languages. You, you would know it's the same language, it's just different small vocabularies and accents. It's different from India. In terms of India, it's actually made up with many different smaller kingdoms that, has, that have completely different languages. Whereas China is like, it's still the same language. It's just vastly different sounding from place to place. And then certain, obviously certain particular dialect would have their own vocabulary that is not in Mandarin. But in terms of um, like grammatical structure, right? And, and then the official things spoken, it's still the same. So it's a little bit different situation. Um, the written language is the same. You would say like the written is completely shared and also from from past to now it continued on pretty much so that's why i think studying history is is just easier in a way in china because china happened to have a lot of records that goes back and you can actually read 2000 years ago people's writing and understand it pretty much and and that just becomes impossible for certain cultures that has that has gone through too many changes of that <sighs> Yeah, Minayu. Minayu is in the Fujian area, in the south of China. It has a very cute sound. <laughs> very cute. I find it very, very uh, <laughs> undulating, but I can't, I can't speak it, but it sounds super cute. Sichuan dialect, yeah, and, and northeastern dialects are, are spiritually very similar. They don't sound like, but they're spiritually very similar. They have that roughness. You know, so Sichuan accent always makes you sound angrier and more masculine, I'd say, than Mandarin. So Sichuan dialect, Dongbei dialect are perfect for quarreling. If you want to attack people with language, don't pick, don't pick Shanghai dialect or Suzhou dialect. If, if you argue with people in Suzhou dialect, it would like, it would sound like you're singing. You two people are singing songs to each other. And that kind of like really, really soft and gentle. And it just doesn't sound uh, aggressive, no matter how hard you try, because of the dialect, just, just so. But if you argue in Dongbei accent or in Chongqing dialect, um, oh, you're murdering people. You're literally murdering them with your language. So aggressive, so aggressive. And, and you pretty much can jam dirty word into every, every line or every half line you speak when you argue or when you quarrel in Sichuan dialect. <laughs> Just add that couple of words. M, 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 P. Anybody who knows Chinese uh, of the, of that um, M, 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 P, which is a, which is the Sichuan dialect thing. Uh, the four words that are very aggressive and you can pretty much add to the end of every sentence. Hmm. 
if you know, you know. If you don't know, don't ask me. I can't explain it to you. <laughs> Even if you know Mandarin, it's still impossible to to explain that to you in Chongqing. Uh, in, in like fully explain what it means, unless you're from the local place. You're like, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Sample, please. No, no. Chongqing is Chongqing is so angry. I can't do that. People, are, people are gonna just cut that out of this live stream. And then put it out on the internet and saying I'm, I'm swearing in dirty words. So I'm not gonna do that. But it's very aggressive. <clears throat> like the F your mother word in, in Chongqing dialect sounds very aggressive. Um, <laughs> and it can be added to the beginning of every sentence. <laughs> but it just, it just sounds really, really aggressive. That's it. Um, the nature of it. What do you think of foreign accent? No mainland Chinese. What do I think? It, it is what it is. <laughs> you know, as long as people can communicate, it does not matter. Um, no specific character count. It it just yeah. Cantonese is very fierce too. Yeah yeah yeah. Cantonese is not naturally very, very aggressive too. Because Cantonese also has a lower position of a pronunciation. So Mandarin is really high. Mandarin is probably one of the highest language pitch wise, I think, compared to every other language you can hear in this world. It's like on the highest level possible already. Every dialect pretty much is lower. Maybe Suzhou dialect is higher. I don't know. But, but every other thing is pretty much lower. You speak, so when you speak Chongqing, Sichuan dialect, you're pretty much at the same position as you're pronouncing English, which is more back and lower, and Mandarin is higher and more up, up, up front. Yeah. <clears throat> For example, um, Dream of Splendor, its title is based on a, uh, like a note of, of recording what life is like, the details written in Song Dynasty after Bei Song got, um, if you read the history, you know the two emperors got abducted to the north. And one of the uh, scholar at the time was forced, like many people, to run away from invasion and down to south. And that's south, how South Song started. And this guy wrote this note remembering his life back in Dongjing, which is the capital that the Dream of Splendor is setting. And in that book, he talks about a lot of things like how people drink tea, how people entertain themselves. It's like a record of capital life. That book got passed down and the book is called Dongjing Menghua Lu. So that's why the drama took the Menghua Lu title because it happened in Dongjing most of the time, which is the capital at the time. And so for that title of the book, Dongjing Menghua Lu, if you pronounce it in Mandarin, that's Dongjing Menghua Lu. You're at this. If you speak it in like, uh, say it in Chongqing dialect, it will be Dongjing Menghua Lu. You can hear it's lower, you know, it's the same thing, but it's spoken at a lower position. Um, and if you try other dialect, like, like Cantonese, it will be also lower. This is just, yeah, it's how it works. Interesting. <clears throat> Purple velvet. That one is. This one is not. This one is a gemstone one that I bought off Taobao. This one because it's pinned. It's pinned into my hair. It's a little bit hard to, to unpin it. Can I let you see that? Uh, it's kind of copied from Ginkgo tree leaf, and Liu Yifei did have one on her head. Similar to this. Okay, let me try to try to see if it can focus. Ah, this is not on auto, so it's, it's gonna be. You see that? That's what it looks like. <laughs> so this one is stone. You can tell it's stone. This one is silk. I made this one yesterday. <laughs> talk about being talk about being productive, hey.
So, yeah. <clears throat> this is song. This is very song. This is like can be song and tang and even ming, depending on how you look at it. You know, true historical costumes are just overall less less decorative than what you see in dramas. In dramas, you see a lot of like ribbons, a lot of like attached little uh, embroideries here and there. Even the texture, like they would put a lot of like little things here and there just to make it <laughs> complicated. Whereas historical are uh, stuff usually, usually they are less about that much decorative stuff. Um, just because realistically it's too expensive to do like beading, you know, you see like a lot of like contemporary, very Western beading on clothes that usually is just not historical. Although for Song Dynasty, there's a type of beading that's very popular, which is only along the collar. If you have a long robe, like for a female, like this, uh, it doesn't tie up. It just goes all the way from top to, to your like toe level, two lines down. And there is a popular thing that they would put pearl along the collar all the way down from, from the, for the whole collar at a certain about that distance really. They bead pearl along and that is a very Song Dynasty thing. It did exist. But apart from that, historically I don't think there's other beading that happens to costumes in Song Dynasty. It's, that's the only thing they do is along the collar line. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, embroidery is 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 not a very popular thing for a lot of time until late Qing. Qing Dynasty later is really heavy, really heavy on embroidery. Whereas previously usually happens along the collar, like for women uh, along the collar. That's about it. And they're not extensive. And they're more into sometimes printed pattern, sometimes weaved into the, 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 the fabric. So the fabric, uh, the, like this is printed, but there are fabric that has um, anwen, dark, which is just weaved with the thread itself, a pattern into the material. And when you move around, the light would give you the different look of it as you move in the light. And that is a more, they, 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 it's sort of perceived as a higher way, higher taste. So you see a one colored costume, one piece, that's just one color. But if you look closer, you see it has like cloud, it has dragon, it has patterns weaved into the fabric itself. That's a really <laughs> popular thing. And actually really expensive to do, you know, making it much more expensive than embroidery, really. Because if you have a one just piece of fabric and you embroidery on that, you just hire somebody who do that, you know, ding, ding, out. But it's one person who works on it later. Whereas if you have the pattern weaved into the fabric, you have to actually have the machine ready to do that work. And that just makes it from from the get-go more expensive <laughs> yeah like brocade or um uh, there are different types like zhijing there are types of ke si, so they're all different and then yeah chinese historical fabrics are crazy like some some ancient stuff there's a very interesting thing is when they dig out um a han dynasty cave uh, cave, uh grave which was over two thousand years old I remember they discovered because of the wetness they managed to the, the cave managed to keep a piece of rope long rope fully intact for 2000 years and it's fully made of silk a big piece silk and it's so thin and translucent that it took them days to be able to unfold it because in case it breaks it took the uh like a lot of effort to manage to open it up and see it's a full long sleeve, huge robe, one layer of silk, and they weighed it. It's under 50 gram. The whole thing is under 50 gram. And it's 
so light that even till today, we haven't been able to replicate the thing. Every time people tried to make it in exact same dimension, it's always heavier than 50 gram. Um, it cannot be as light. And there's a reason for that is they looked very carefully with microscope at the uh, texture of that piece of silk and they realized the, th the strand of silk is different from now because silkworms over thousands of years genetically have been changing. 2000 years ago silkworm, they produce naturally thinner silk. And that is impossible to get now because all the silkworms today would produce thicker strands. There's no way to make it thin. So starting from the strand, you already get a heavier strand. Therefore, there's no way you can ever create a lightweight and translucent piece as 2000 years ago. And, and that's what they found. <laughs> and so yeah, that's one of the most famous 2000 years ago garment in Chinese history, which is under 50 gram, incredible, impossible to recreate anymore. Because right now we don't have that silkworm anymore in this world. All silkworms are not of that genetic makeup anymore. So you can't create it. It's, it's, it's like in history forever. Isn't that cool? Song Dynasty has the smallest territory yet the richest. Um, depending on which part of Song, right? Song is two parts. The second part is definitely much smaller. First part at certain time is not too bad. Yeah, but it's not as big as Han or Tang or, or Qing at the maximum, if you want to think about that. Yes, that's true. Well, it could be natural selection. It could also just be, it just over time, things change, you know, like the watermelon we eat today is not a thousand years ago watermelon anymore. Yeah, it, it's, it's a complicated thing, you know, you would have to have like a lot of high technology involved to analyze why, you know, over time, silkworms have changed over time. Maybe to do with the leaves they eat, that's different, you know, or maybe like they had a couple of like wave of disease and the stronger ones survived and the ones survived just happened to create thicker strands. You know, that could all be, um, but it's just the, the, the interesting things that, that, that you can find right, in history from all angles. <clears throat> yeah, that could be. So, huh. Today we've been talking about random stuff, a lot of random stuff. Is there anything else that's interesting? Let me see. Yeah. I'm curious to see the next half of Splendor, just really just see how they're gonna play the Empress story. Please, I just pray, don't fuck it up, don't. <sighs> because we have a lot of, I think current, current people, if they're not very well read in history, they are not very aware of, things don't progress like in linear fashion. You think we are more open than ancient people, for example, 100 years ago, 200 years ago, about a lot of things. And you think the further back you go, they are more, you know, restrictive and stuff, but it's not true. Um, history actually doesn't happen like that. Tang Song dynasties overall have a much open, much more open idea about, for example, um, the whole purity idea of women. It's actually different, very different from the immediate past of China. If you think about Republic of China, back in Qing Dynasty, back in Ming, that was a much tighter, darker, harder time. And if you move further back, Tang Song, and then you go back to Wei Jing, and then further back into Han, oh my God. Like back then, like there's no idea of that. Actually, people don't have the concept of chastity of the women is like not even like they wouldn't think of it that way it does not exist in the rhetoric at all um in the way that we believe it could be <laughs> just because it's back in the past so 
I just hope the drama, like right now the drama looks very, very dangerous in this area because they're already making things up that doesn't exist actually back then and, and the concept or, or people's idea of morality and whatever is actually very different um, from the way that the drama portrays it. So I'm just worried they're gonna screw up the Emperor's story whereas in reality it's just so much more sassier and sexier and and it makes you think, you know, like it's really not a natural thing that the sort of whole patriarchy society structure it really got developed over time and it actually ran into specific cases in different geolocations therefore it ended up in different things and it's never just one way of looking at the thing it's totally fascinating so in Song Dynasty honestly in history the time that you're seeing Splendor uh, uh, the dream of Splendor thing is going on the truth of that time was it's very common for a woman to marry twice, three times. If they divorce, they just divorce and they marry again, marry again. You know, there's no significant prejudice against a woman being pure. You know, I mean, yes, if you are, like it's, it's better, I guess, but it's not like if you're not, you should go and die. <laughs> it wouldn't be like that. It's not Qing Dynasty. It's not Ming and Qing and Ming Guo, where it just got really, really weird and toxic. In older times, it's, it's, it's just like not even, people don't even think of it as a problem. That's the thing. And for this, like, I will make, probably make a specific video if the drama fucks it up uh, later. But I can quickly mention about this empress in Dreams, uh, A Dream of Sl Splendor you're watching now. In the timeline, that empress right at the time when the, dra when the drama is going on, her story is just insanity plus insanity. So cool and so unimaginably like a novel. So she's known to be a commoner not born out of any prestigious background at all and probably not even educated. She definitely is a pretty woman. She has to be super pretty. Otherwise, mm, there's no way, <laughs> okay, this is, this is gonna, gonna work out in this way. She's very young, she got married to a guy. They're already married. And then they moved to Dongjing capital. At that time, she is around early 20s, I think, historically. And her husband, um, and also herself in a way because they want to progress in their life and they're just commoners and she's pretty there's there's um unconfirmed I think uh, record of whether she is a guji wuji so a dancer or singer like the type of Zhao Pangers kind of character whether she is or not not hundred percent but she's definitely a commoner and um, having no specific background and she married in her teens with a husband they got to the capital and this husband is like in order to progress and impress other people he sold her he sold her to a guy named Zhang Qi and this guy is also an opportunist and then and and he introduced her to at the time a prince not yet an emperor and this prince is five years younger than the woman. So the woman is early 20s, married, very pretty woman who got sold off by her husband to a guy. And this guy introduced her to the prince because she's really pretty. She must be super pretty, right? And he is so taken by her that he just lost like his head. And he got so distracted by this woman that he starts to zone out basically and got discovered by his emperor father one day. It was like, what happened to you? Why do you look like your soul is not attached to you anymore? And he found out that he is with this woman who probably comes from a really humble jianji background. And then the emperor was really pissed. So he was like, you can't be with her anymore. So he, the emperor forced his son to kick this woman out of his place. But he, the prince really likes her. And the guy, the guy he, she got sold to also knows that the prince likes her. So he takes her in and treats her very well and basically like set her up outside of the uh, prince's residence. And the prince still likes her very much, but he can't, you know, go and actually marry her anyway. So for years, they were like in that kind of relationship. And, and this guy who, who bought this woman is still in contact with this prince and they were very close. Then the prince 
ascended the throne and became the emperor in the drama right now you're looking at played by Bao Jianfeng and he immediately <laughs> take this girl from outside and you know eventually made her empress and comes the coolest thing what did he do with the original husband of this woman now now the woman is her is his empress the highest ranking woman in the whole kingdom official wife <laughs> first the, the the original husband happily happily okay is like divorced but also he officially becomes the brother of this woman he took that and and they just made it up he's like he's actually not the husband but brother and the guy is like cool i'm the brother i'm happy he got houses money that the emperor paid him to set him up very well and from now on you're officially her brother and she's like cool and emperor is cool the original husband is cool that's all good and actually gave her, gave him a lot of good things you know just he, he had a great life and then the woman becomes the empress and Zhen Zhong really loved her so this is the character that Zhou Yuming and Liu Tao played in that drama Da Song Gong Ci that is that is like a crappy drama but the thing is that it's these two people so this emperor married a woman who married for the second time and got sold as a product you know and he didn't give a shit about her background at all he loved her all his life and really 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 loved her okay it's like no joke but she never produced a song herself so eventually uh, you see Qin Ping Yuan serenade uh, of um of like a piece whatever i forgot the english name wang kai the zhong yangguang drama wang kai renmin you see the emperor that that the uh wang kai place is the adopted son of this empress and wu yue plays liu Le, who is this empress we're talking about and the cool thing about her is not only that she is sort of like the only super a doted like wife and really loved by the emperor after the emperor passed away she was in power for a long time until the next emperor grew up and she was at a point where she really has full control of the politics that she, if she wants to she really can become become the second Wu Zetian of Tang dynasty she is already at a place where it can happen but she didn't let it happen she eventually decided to retreat um, but she can if she wanted to because she already had everything like in her hands she's super politically sure person and the cool thing is she comes from such a background that she definitely didn't get an education properly when she was younger so you can guess she probably educated herself in her life throughout how many years from somebody who is at the very bottom of the society who got sold by her husband to the emperor like, you, know, you just think about how crazy it is and she learned she taught herself writing taught herself politics classics at the point where eventually she can just rank up with all the clever guys officials in the court playing the whole polit politic game with them for decades and not actually losing imagine that isn't that like a big female lead this is like the craziest craziest big female lead i think in chinese history because if you think about Wu Zetian, she actually comes from a family background that is well educated. She is from a official's family, and their ancestor actually have more established the background, much more than Liu Le. Liu Le really is nobody. It's like a random villager girl who is just super pretty, and eventually ended up on the top where she's like, if I want to, I really can be an emperor. But then, okay, I decided not to. So cool. So she's like a true boss and like probably the most crazy one I think if you think about how far she moved from from where she started right to the top and overall the dramatic nature of like being sold by your pa husband and eventually your husband becomes your brother like how does that work so from that you can also tell the overall concept of a woman's purity chastity the whole thing about being loyal to your husband really isn't a thing in north song think about the emperor would just like find it normal to just get a woman <laughs> like this and 
and doesn't even care, you know. And he actually has a really good relationship with her original first husband. Like, be a bro with my wife's former husband, ex, like, uh, and you are the actual emperor of the country. Like, think about that. Unthinkable. Unthinkable for a lot of, even today, you know, like, ah, but, but, but that was real. Like, that's history. Isn't that cool? They should, so, so, you know, one of the reasons why Da Song Gong Ci is such a bad drama is it didn't capture that at all. The Zhou Yumin and Liu Tao drama, when it's talking about the, these two historical figures, it didn't capture the essence and the coolness and the dramatic quality and unimaginable quality of the story at all. And the truth is, she is that kind of woman. And <laughs> mind blowing, isn't it? Liu Le is, she is Liu, so she definitely has a surname Liu, but in terms of her true name, nobody knows. It's not recorded in history. You don't know her given name, what she goes by for most of her life before she become an empress, you don't know. So that's why the history call her Liu Le. Le can be just a word that means woman, you know, like usually describe pretty woman. That's why they call her Liu Le. But the thing is, what her real name is, is lost in history. We just know sh her surname is Liu, that's it. Yeah, she's so cool, isn't it? <laughs> so, put that in perspective. That is the overall societal's opinion on mm -hmm, sex and gender and marriage. Then you think about what Dream of Splendor have described of over, 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 the female lead character emphasizes she's pure, she's a virgin, she never did this and that. You see, you see how, how, how ironic it is? And that totally comes from the scriptwriter, today's scriptwriter's wrong concept of that time. The fact is, Ha Zhao Pan Er really is a Bei Song person, which original work of Yuan Dynasty is later in time. But had she been a Song dynasty, pretty, Gejie, mm -hmm, uh, sort of official prostitute, un until she she got like moved, like she she managed to jump out of that. <clears throat> there, there's first no way that you know, she's a virgin. Okay. Second is she wouldn't care about it, and then the people in that time wouldn't generally care much about it either. And so she wouldn't have the problem of I have to over and over emphasize to other people that I'm this and that. And he, she wouldn't probably even bring that up because in their concept, it's not a big deal. Unimaginable, hey? Well, that's how it works in three, uh, ten, a thousand years ago. Again, history is a weird thing. Yeah, so. Isn't that fascinating? So later, I think the second half of the drama is gonna talk a lot about this empress and how that political problem uh, did exist back in that time. Because because her birth really was a problem that made this emperor got attacked a lot. Because she's not because she married multiple times, but usually because like she's so low birth really, and then she's so politically powerful. And they don't want to, you know, like they worry about a woman taking the throne away again, like the Tang Dynasty Wu Zetian. And that's why she get most of her political enemies and why they attack her. But it's never about you marry twice or something. It's, it's about you, you can't take this throne, that's Zhao family's throne to your Liu family, you know. It's more about that. Yeah. And then uh, quickly talking about a little bit about the Guan Guanji system. It, it kind of worked for a time until after Song, it no longer works in the same way. But around that time, uh, it is true that if you come from, you're either born, like your mother is also in this, so you, you're like naturally one, or you could be um, the, the criminals, like, the, the, the family, for example, your father is an official, you know, husband is official and they, they're found guilty of a big crime. Um, it could be a punishment for the females of the family got basically taken into the system. 
and become this kind of female entertainer. Guan Ji, Guan means official, Ji means prostitution, prostitute, but um, they, th there are differences between them. So the function of the Guan Ji, the two most important fa function, one is at any big ceremony, like a big <coughs> an, uh, ancestral, like a tribute to like heaven, whatever, big ceremony, annual festivals, big entertainment occasions, uh, you know, like official government host a kind of celebration of any kind, big ones, in welcoming for foreign diplomat, like think about a million ways they can celebrate. They, these women are the go-to person. The one of the most important job they do is sing and dance and play music instrument and entertain. So they're the performer, they're the official performers of the country and they serve the government. So that's why they're called Guanji. They, they literally are owned by the government. And that's one of the most important thing is they're entertainers. They go, sing, dance, do all that. Obviously they will have to entertain the banquet, you know, like drinking wine. The other thing is they sell wine. They're liquor sellers. One of the most important work of Guanji is selling liquors because liquor is owned by the government. You cannot privately sell liquor. You can make it yourself if you drink it yourself, but you cannot sell it. If you make it and sell it yourself, head off, okay? Over, I think over seven kilos, if you sell over seven kilos of wine made by yourself, you're dead, okay? That's the law. So the right of uh, salt and liquor is completely controlled by the government. So government has this places of making wine and brewing stuff, and then they sell it, right, to, <clears throat> To distribute that to smaller uh, uh, vendors or even just individual people, and <laughs> it's like it's like a nightclub, the beer selling girls type of thing. So one of the important jobs of these women is go out and sell wines. That's the second function. That's the most important one. During Song Dynasty, the official prostitutes is forbidden to actually have sexual relationship with officials. So if you are a commoner you know you can you can pay money and sleep with them no problem at all and that that's what they do often because it gives them money it's one of the income sources for those women to do that so that's why i say it's almost impossible for Zhao Panghe's role to be a virgin until she's 24 <laughs> like yeah well she's she, she's a guanji until 16 and then she got out of it um but um <clears throat> so from like it's still very hard basically for her to be a virgin. I mean not saying impossible, but it's hard um, <clears throat> And then So they can sleep with commoners to get money, but they cannot Sleep with officials if you have a rank in the official system Whichever ping and whichever job you have if you are official you cannot because it's a law uh, in Song Dynasty If you do that um, If you get found out both you and this woman is gonna get into trouble very seriously. And often in Beisong's politics, there are a couple of very famous cases where your political enemy wanna attack you and one of the reasons they go for it is you have slept with this prostitute. Uh, yeah, it has happened multiple times. So, um, that, that is like the interesting thing about Guanji. And once you're Guanji, you can't get out of it yourself unless Guanfu, the government, gives you a let you go. So they have the full right of whether they keep you as a Guanji on, on service, you know, selling wines and entertain people, entertain ceremonies, occasions, or you can become a Liangming, which is a, literally means a good person, but literally means a commoner. Whether you can be free is totally dependent upon the sort of official who is running that place, whether they have the right first to say, okay, I take you out of this registry and now you're a commoner. They want to do it, they can do it. If they don't want to do it, you never get out of it. And that's just, nah. It's a way of exploiting women for sure in history, but that's how Guanji functions. So it's a little bit different from just prostitute. They, they, they are a little bit different, okay? So that's at least in Beisong is like that. Different dynasties have it a little bit differently. Um, how it works. Uh, what else? Let me think. Oh, Guanji. Oh, this are, 
There's this famous person. If you know, you know, Su Shi. How many people know about him? Most famous Song Dynasty poet, Su Shi, Su Dongpo, Su Dongpo. Ding Yuxi actually played him for a bit in Serenade of um, the, 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 the Qingping, Qingping Yue. Wang Kai drama, you know, for, for a very short couple of scenes, Ding Yuxi played him, Su Shi. He's well known. He's pretty much like an interesting person in every sense, and almost one of the uh, like he, in many ways he's already like the limit of how good a guy can be in, in in Chinese history, really, in terms of his talent, how interesting the person himself is, and and, and then how how good he is to the people. Whenever he's official at a certain place, he does a lot of good things for the people in that place, and he actually is a talented person in all kinds of things considered. But even with that that in mind, he has done something that's like pretty, you know, in today's standard, terrible, which is when she was an official of a certain place, there was a very famous Guanji official prostitute who came to her uh, him and saying she wants to go back to commoner. She wants him to sign the paper to let her go. And he refused. And he refused on the basis of you are too talented, too pretty. She's one of the most famous person of that area, dancing, singing, whatever. To if we lose you as a government, we lose a big resource of entertainment. Therefore, I don't sign it. So he's being that, you know. So so think about the complicated nature of of humans at that time, but also just think about the function of Guanji. So Guanji is not just prostitute. To the gov they are owned by government. They work for the government. The value they create is for the government. You know, selling wines and getting, you know, entertainment uh, artist stuff. And but but they are they're considered to be the low, you know, lowest level social class, and they don't have personal freedom. And isn't that interesting? <laughs> the whole sort of so so for Guanji to become freed from her sort of registry is very hard. So Zhao Pan'er has to be a super lucky woman to be able to say at the age of 16 with how pretty she is. Just think about Liu Yifei, you know, like with her look, like she doesn't even need to dance. She just stands there. Nobody would want to let her go. Honestly, if I were official of that, 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 that town, you know, uh, that county, she's on my registry. I'm like, I never let you go. I just let you sit there. You don't even have to sing and dance. I just look at you and I'm happy. And there's no way I'm letting you go back to being a commoner. <laughs> so she must have had some super luck, which the drama hasn't really explained in detail about how she got this grant from the local official to let her go, to let her come off that registry. <clears throat> yeah, that, that must be like the miracle luck probably luckier than Gu Tianfan running into her, really. The level of... of <laughs> she's already lucky at least twice in her life, in that sense. One of the most lucky women <laughs> in Song Dynasty. <laughs> okay, I, I'm gonna... I'm gonna go away for a bit, and then I'll come back.
Okay, I'm back. <clears throat> Whew, ah, we can talk a little bit about Gu Qianfan. This is a completely made up character. Uh, it's not in the Yuan Qu, the Yuan Dynasty play that the drama is, at least the character names come from that. He's made up. Uh, the likelihood of Chen Xiao's character existing the way he exists in this drama is also very low. Not saying impossible, but highly, highly unlikely. I'm gonna explain that to you, okay? <laughs> While literally just dabbing my face with a little bit of powder on screen, because why not? I get oily and shiny. I'm very oily. I shine too much. I know it's, it's kind of the popular look of South Korean makeup, but <laughs> it's too oily. <clears throat> okay. Gu Qianfan. Um, there are a couple of things that the drama set up of this character that doesn't quite make sense. Uh, it's an extreme rare case <laughs> that this type of person would exist in the way. First, the drama's uh, security office, Huang Cheng Si. In the drama, English translation is, I think, security office. Huang Cheng Si, where he works. That thing, it did exist in Song Dynasty, but it's a different organization. It doesn't work really function like the way that it describes in the drama. The drama has it more like Jin Yi Wei in Ming Dynasty. So if you've watched Brotherhood of Blades, even if you watched uh, Sassy Princess, you'll know the male characters in that is a Jin Yi Wei, embroidered guard uniform uh, guy. Uh, that's a system in Ming Dynasty. It doesn't exist in Song. And Song's Huang Cheng Si is not like this at all. Um, but the drama, at least in the drama's depiction of the function of it, it looks more like um, a Ming Dynasty Jin Yi Wei, which is like a private service to the emperor, spies and watching over, you know, is there anything going on in that? Uh, so that's one thing. Second is, in the drama, it does talk about his Chushen, which is Jin Shi. He is Liang Bang Jin Shi, Di Wu Ming the third, fifth on the second, which is very high. So talking about <laughs> the official exam system in China, that is a one, one of a kind uh, uh, in the world. So Jingshi is a type of person who's gone through very difficult exams and there aren't that many in the whole country. If you start study Jing and go to those exams, Usually starting your teenager years, you can start to go. You have to go through rounds and rounds of exam. First at the county level, then at the sort of state level, and then you move on and on until eventually to the final level where the first three that comes to the top of the exam would get the, they get the exam literally in the court of the emperor. The emperor is the supervisor standing over them, watching them taking the final exam. So imagine the pressure of that. And once you finish that final exam, the first, second, third person would be Zhuangyuan Bang Yan Tan Hua. That's their title. And um, in the drama, you see the Ouyang Xu character comes third, played by Xu Haiqiao. He comes third. So he is Tan Hua, Tan Hua Lang. And the one above him is Bang Yan. The Top one is Zhuangyuan. So usually every three years, this kind of exam happens, but not always, okay? Sometimes more, sometimes less. And it's extremely hard. Like for the whole year's exam of everybody in this country, only one person can come to the top as a Zhuangyuan, Bang Tanhua. And then they would have yi jia, er jia, san jia. So yi jia is like a list of the first how many people. The er jia is the second list, and san jia second, third list. But think about if you come from the entire country, even if you can end up on the last list, last one, you're like beaten tens of thousands, of hundreds of thousands of people already. So when you can go into those yi jia, er jia, san jia as, as like passing the exam, having names on the rank, you're a jing shi. You become a jing shi. Once you become a jing shi, even if you don't get any official, like you don't get any jobs in office of any kind, you just live as a gentleman in the village, you already have privileges, such as if you get into a court case, nobody can beat you up. They cannot physically harm you because you are now a jing shi. You are exempt from getting physical punishment. You don't need to go to any 
Yao Yi, which is the type of if there's a war breaking out or if we have a canal to build, we're gonna take strong young men to, to, to build things, you know, or to go on battles. And if you are Jing Shi, you're exempt from that too. You also get a lot of other benefits. So you become the sort of gentleman class of your place, you know, right? And it's hard. Think about the country, every three years, one exam, and only a couple of hundred people, you know, hundred people can end up being Jing Shi. And Gu Qianfan is on the second list, so he's not Yi Jia, he's Er Jia, fifth, the fifth one, which is already in incredibly diff difficult to get in the exam. So he is not only physically strong, he's like a master fighter, he's also scholarly, already better than 99.9% .9 of every people studying in the country. <laughs> like possibilities of having that person existing and by the age of 30 still is a virgin <laughs> in Song Dynasty? Impossible. No matter like whether his mother died young, that his in the clan, in the Gu family clan, the elders would have married him to somebody long time ago, long time ago when he was 15 probably. Because back then people live to their 30s and they die. Um, the average expected life expectancy is like 35 to 40. So if you live beyond 40, you are considered lucky already. Starting from 40 is like every day is counting backwards and you're considered to be like super lucky already. So think about that. He's already at the three quarters of his expected life expectancy. And he's of Er Jia Jing Shi. It's like, that's like really high. Think about that. And he also is like Huang Cheng's like this official. And he comes from a family who's, who's got a lot of officials in their ancestry. Like the, the, the totally like a, the, like not aristocrat, but official like high level family. Shi Ren Jia Zhu. There's no way. Like, even if he's not officially married, he would have a lot of concubines already by that point because the elders of the family would just not allow you to go around like not married and not having kids. You would have like servants girl who served you like since she was 12 or something, already slept with you a million times. You probably already have a lot of children who even if you don't have an official wife, they're like your concubine's children. And once you have an official wife, they become the official wife's children. That's how it's gonna work. In history. So having Gu Qianfan played by Chen Xiao with that kind of birth, that kind of like just stellar performance in that society, and at the age of 30, and still a virgin. And then running into Zhao Pan Er with that kind of beauty and still was able to get out of Yue Ji, uh, Guan Ji, you know, get a registry and become a commoner. Ha! Huh. It, it, it's like it, it, it's like two meteor in the universe coming from light years apart just happen to hit each other. <laughs> Lucky. <laughs> so so that's why like just just look at it as a, a romantic story. Don't take it seriously. It's just it, it, it would take way too much luck for that to happen. <laughs> You have better, like higher possibilities of running into an alien on the street than having that happen in Song Dynasty. <coughs> well, he's close to 30, I think, because he was 18 when he was a Jing Shi and he worked 12 years. So that's 30, making him 30, right on, on the brink of 30. Um, and wearing scarlet at 30 is already insane anyway. Yeah, yeah, I forgot to mention he got to Wu Ping Guan. <laughs> yeah, so the more you know about history, the sadder it became. You know, it's like, yeah, there's no way that happens. <laughs> but then it's nice to know these things, you know, you know how it works in history and put it in perspective. I think this drama had, had a couple of bad episodes online in China. One is they really promote it with the wrong tag. They just tag it so wrong that it made a lot of people angry. Second is certain lines in this drama need to be thought of a little bit more, edited, taken out. It's the whole angle of things is, uh, is quite weird. It either is showing the scriptwriter is uneducated at all, she didn't do research, 
or she knows but she intentionally still did it this way because she think it's gonna get more controversial and therefore getting more traffic which is a long stretch hmm if it's neither of those and she genuinely believe in the whole chastity idea of purity or that whole angle of you know if if i sell my body therefore i'm lower than every then that's problematic then it is 21st century come on like what are you thinking you're more you're more conservative than ancient people like it just like is ridiculous when you think about that so different angles of looking at that you don't know exactly what 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 is the reason why the drama at certain points would give you lines that just keeps getting it's like come on it's 21st century come on even based on people don't care about this that much why do you care um but then if you don't know this is the writer who wrote Nu Yi Ming Fei Zhuan the Liu Shi Shi drama a couple of years ago of Ming Dynasty she is a doctress like imperial doctress it's the same scriptwriter, so put that in perspective. I'm not surprised. I mean, in that drama, she literally gave Liu Shi Shi the superpower of curing rabies. Do you remember? There's a plot where they were in the north, and and a girl got bitten by a ra ra rabbit dog, and and she was able to cure her. Huh. Nobody has managed to do that in human history yet so if the writer can write that so, so there's no surprise like she probably doesn't care about logic anyway <laughs> that much okay so um, yeah so that's that that's in perspective let's hope it doesn't get more it doesn't get more uh, mm, mm, later <sighs> all right there's there's no need to emphasize that thing you know it's 21st century anyway and but and also just because ancient time people are not like that at all what else is interesting about that drama there are a lot of things that's interesting about that drama so in that way the drama is still very valuable quickly showing you this <laughs> I did it yesterday <laughs> sticker so if you like it <laughs> you, you can find it in my shop not not asking you to buy it don't worry about it i'm just showing you and she's got way too many styles in the drama and it's not even like it's only half of the drama that aired and she's over, she has over 10 looks i'm like i can't draw all of them it's too much work so i have this one out if she has like way too many later and that's still pretty i may do another one i may not it's just too much work to draw all these individually <laughs> yeah like, like, let's see if you can see it hmm. so pretty much in time in the order of chronicle chronological time of her appearing in the drama plus the guy the guy is here but he he, he has a limited number of looks <laughs> yeah so i can't even put her in this sort of 20 heads uh sticker just because she's got way too many looks that i can't have two of them each It's so hard. <laughs> she she's got way too many looks. Uh, <laughs> yeah, twenty sixteen. I can't remember that. I I can't even sing the song. <laughs> I, I I tell you, like I have like super memories of dramas and, and songs, you know. <clears throat> Do you still remember that song? <laughs> Imperial Doctors, yeah. It's a good song though. The ending song, I think. This is the ending song, isn't it? Yes, it is. I just remembered heavy rain is coming that's the title <coughs> 
的潮湿，远看在流逝。那年的以后，每段故事，原来结尾都相似。越是，眼泪尽是可而止。的诗里三种，会有周而复始。嗯 ，See，I remember everything. I'm just joking. <clears throat> Because I was really offended by the drama, I think. Because its depiction of those two emperors, which are real in Chinese history, is really off. Like it's really different from history. In a way, they're they're like the 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 Ming Dynasty version of the Song Dynasty emperors who got abducted too. And but but <laughs> and yeah, it, it just like went a little bit far from recorded history. And I guess I like both Huang Xuan and Huo Jinhua. So I wasn't a fan of how the drama basically played, like written both rows, and 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 yeah, it's very different from history anyway. So 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 you know, it's it comes from this writer.、Uh, <laughs> I I guess like manage your expectation is my suggestion. Oh, that song is hard to sing, also, because it has a long line in the middle that you can't breathe. Uh, uh, the part that 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 that's like the chorus part. <laughs> it's really long. <laughs> it's not easy. That singer is a great singer too. She's really good. <clears throat> Wang Yuyan, ah,、uh, Wang Yuyan. Well, yeah, Wang Yuyan. She's only sixteen at the time. When you look at her younger dramas, you really can tell. Like, like human usually is like you grow your chin at the end of the whole、uh, part. It always is the chin is gonna grow bigger and stronger as you get older. So when she's sixteen, she's got a weaker, smaller, smaller chin. And if you look at now, you can tell this part. The rest of her face didn't change. It's the chin that starts to move a little bit. Interesting. Shen Yi talked about that in Under the Skin. It's like after twenty five, your chin finally forms. Before that, your chin is always growing, and you can tell. You can tell really on her face so clearly. When she was younger, she has a shorter face, and then it starts to grow bigger. <coughs> Drama soundtrack. I really like Nirvana Fire soundtrack. Um, one of the ones I've heard, like I've listened to most. Uh, what else? There are a couple of Korean drama soundtracks are really good. Most of the Korean drama soundtracks are really good.、Uh, um, Chinese ones, actually, Ten Miles of Peach Blossoms. Their OST, like all those like fifty soundtracks, they have like fifty little songs made up for the different parts of the plot. That one is really well written. I'm very very shocked by how well written it is. And even like Chen Xiyuan, Love and Destiny, they also have like about twenty tracks written for different parts of the drama. That is only music, no no lyrics. Those are really good. <clears throat> Minglan, Minglan OST, huh? Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. I love that one. But that is so self-copied from Nirvana. Like some of the、um, Zhifo's OST is like inherited from Zheng Wu Yang Guang's previous dramas. They just play play a different var variation of it. If you are familiar with Zheng Wu Yang Guang's previous dramas, you immediately spot they're taking it from that. They're taking it from that. <laughs> But it's good. It's good. It's just like very. Easy and lazy. <laughs> Dong Gong's song is ridiculous. Like the song that they bought, not for the like the drama doesn't have it like written originally, but they bought the 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 Li Shang that song. It's just insanity. Like why would you need to write a song that goes so high? And it's too high that it's like、uh, to me. I think it's over the top. You don't need to make it so high pitched that he, like normal people can't sing that level, and it 
and it wouldn't even sound good when you have humans sing that level of pitch it just sounds like like sirens <laughs> like why would you want that <clears throat> you know na 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 that song like it's so so high and it's lower part is really low too you know? And then it starts to climb, climb, and it went to the part where I was like, oh, no, whoa, it doesn't sound good. I can't do that. It's so, it's so over the top. It's not any. Not a fan of hers. I know she's popular. I know she's sung a lot of, um, Paper dramas, high pitch songs, but I'm so not a fan of her songs and her performance. She shrieks, and it's just like I don't know. It's like <laughs> I prefer like more emotional and textured voices. Not not that it's like yeah, it can go high. It's like yeah, so what? <laughs> uh, until you can sing to the to the pitch beyond. Um, beyond the, the the human ears hearing and only dogs can hear you and if you can do that you can't even hear that yourself so would that be cool <laughs> you know only your pet can hear you that would be cool yeah i am not a fan of her scene but it's just me it's just me okay <laughs> talking about preferences maybe i'm just jealous of her because i can't sing as high pitch Dolphin voice. <clears throat> it's really hard to make the high pitch sound good. Like it's high pitch, but also nice. It's hard. Once you go beyond the point, it just never is gonna be nice. It's just gonna be shrieking. Hu Ge can sing well, yes, but he doesn't sing anymore. Hey, hardly. Chen Xiao can sing very well too, actually. Chen Xiao, uh, Huang Xuan, a couple of actors who are actually really good singers. Who else? There's another one for sure. Who, who, who? Ren Su Xi can sing very well. Uh, Lou Yixiao can sing very well. For the women, who can sing very well? Uh, the. Uh, uh, Zheng <clears throat> uh, Qiu Hong, Zheng Qiu Hong, in 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 the Dying with Love, because uh, she's a professional singer. The lady in Under the Skin. In one case where she is, she's the runaway wife of the uh, domestic violence husband. That actress is a professional singer. Huh. <laughs> Why do I know these things? That's so weird. <clears throat> Who else can can see sing? I mean, like you don't know, like not coming from idol land. If they're already singers, I'm not including them. I'm I'm just talking about you don't realize they can sing and they can sing very well. Type of actors. Uh, who else? Oh, there are a couple more. Oh, how late actress? Do you do you know? Like she's older. She's the uh, she's been in a lot of old dramas. She's super pretty and talented. She can sing very well. Yeah, there there are a lot of very good singers. Oh, Zhang Xincheng. Yeah, but Zhang Xincheng kind of you know because he's from musical. <laughs> Major. If he can't sing, he wouldn't even get enrolled. You know so. Expected. That's expected. Anyway, just suddenly got to the singing part of the whole thing. Uh, so what else can we talk about? It's already at 12 almost. Time flies. Ah, uh, it's already two hours and a half. Um, wow. Let's just do another 15 minutes and call it a day. <coughs> Liu Yifei can sing too, but she's not professional. Like she can sing a little bit. But, but that's it. <laughs> Joy of Life season two? Nope. Nobody knows. They do want to start making it this year, but not yet announcing. <laughs> Soundtrack song from When You Be Me. Ah, oh, that drama. I should. Uh, I watched till middle middle of it. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. Pretty much like. Like me watching the Ren Youlun and Zhuang Dafei drama, Binary Love. It's like it's enjoyable while you're watching it, but once you stop it, you forgot about it. <laughs> you forgot to go back to it. 
Oh. Yeah, so very quickly time flies. Mm. Don't have much to talk about today. Mm. What else? Mm. Yeah, so let's hope the rest of this Dream of Splendor is a good drama so that I can make more videos on it. Please don't F it up. I'm just worried about their promotion that just never do the right thing. And then the scriptwriter is, scriptwriter is just like, stop, like, ah, uh, yeah. I wish I can cut out certain things in this drama. Just move that one line and it will be so much better. Why do they have to keep those annoying lines in this drama? And just, mm. <laughs> Favorite dramas this year until now, a couple of them, you know. <clears throat> I enjoyed Under Skin. I enjoyed Lifelong Journey. Uh, Reset is pretty good too. Right now, Dream of Splendor is very enjoyable, but it's probably not the... I wouldn't say it's like a great drama. Like if you want to look at a lot of things it does, it's less than ideal. But then certain parts of it is so good <laughs> that at right now, honestly, I, I am just only looking forward to the prettiness, like the clothes, the looks of things, beautiful shots if it comes up later, because she has a couple of really pretty shots later. You already see in trailers. Then the uh, the sugar, the sugar, the sugar between the leads, because this time, Chen Xiao and Liu Yifei really got it working. Previously, Liu Yifei is, is like non-reactive really, but now, woo -hoo, it works. So I'm, I'm here for sugar and beauty for this drama. That's it. That's the only thing I'm looking forward to. Everything else is like, does not matter. Or maybe a little bit Zhan Sun is cool too. You know what Zhan Sun is, right? Zhan Sun. Zhan means battle, Sun means damage and harm. So all the parts that getting people basically beaten up, cut up, blood flying everywhere. Oh, more. Okay, because all audiences are psychos. You are, all of you, including me, we're all psychos. Okay, we all want to see that, be honest. One of the reasons, one of the reasons you cast really good looking people and mess them up. Because you want to have very good looking people and you mess them up. Ah! <laughs> so enjoyable to watch. So, Zhan Sun Tang. Uh, battle damage, sugar, and beauty is what I look forward to in Dream of Splendor. Anything else, I don't care. You know, I know it's, I know it's not a very, you know, like the high concept or, or even, even like, like well thought through drama, but hey, who cares? I just want to look at pretty people kissing, kissing more. Yeah. And this time they kiss a lot, but they kiss at the right moment and they kiss with the right chemistry. So it no longer feels artificial it feels like really like think about there are a couple of things in in the like 19 episode 19 20 that really reminds you of what you know like when you're on campus in universities i don't know in other countries but in china like if you live in dormitory and there's a pair of young lovers and they see each other to their like the guy you know walk the girl to her dormitory and she's about to go up he can't and they were like under like the building and they were like in I broke off for one second. I hope it's not a big problem. <clears throat> yeah, so. I'm a shallow person. I just want a basic kernel enjoyment and pleasure. I don't care. I just I don't look forward to that, and I'd be happy. Um, and then let's see what what good dramas can come up during summer. Usually in summer we'll have a couple of good ones. <sighs> the dorm example. Yeah. Well, you probably have seen that if you go to a certain type of university. Because I know in the West, you don't usually have a huge campus dormitory type of situation. Oh, definitely not like China, but in China, it's like that. It's like the girls live in this dormitory building, the guys live in another one. And, and there are rules about, you know, like when you can visit and who can go in. <laughs> and, and that whole host of, we have to part, we don't want to part, we have, we have to part, we don't want to part. And at night, it's just so, so like, so like, that situation, um, I can relate. 
I, I definitely understand exactly what it's doing there, but maybe in certain countries that, that even like that, that kind of environment doesn't exist. So you wouldn't have this thing going on. <laughs> yeah, we can talk about a couple of random things and we can end this. What else do people want to talk about? Da, 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 da. <laughs> the first costume drama. Wow, that, that I have to do research probably a long time ago. I can take this down and then see if I can show you. <laughs> It. Well, I have taken this one off, so I will just take this one off too. <laughs> Which is the pen? <laughs> it's so hard to find it with, with your fingers. Uh, I want to see it. Okay, if I can't see it, I can't do it. Now I have no ornaments. Suddenly I look like about to, I'm about to go to sleep if I take off my, if I take off my lipstick, right? <laughs> the weirdness of dressed up and dressed down. <clears throat> focus. Oh, let's see if the focus can catch it. Come on, catch it. Do this. Ugh. Move it to this. Cool. Now I'm blurry. Now you're looking at me as if you're looking at from from the uh, Du Changfeng character who needs a glass, needs a pair of glass. That is the one I made. There is a purple ginkgo one. I think Liu Yifei wears in her purple, purple pink one dress, but it's different color. It's a little bit cooler, pink, uh, cooler, and it's made of. Probably like kind of plastic piece that got burned and, and yeah. Anyway, not the same thing, but but kind of the idea, you know, the idea. Hmm. <laughs> got like the freedom of of wearing these things. Can I put it back without? <laughs> Let's see. Without help of a mirror, I'm just looking at myself and it's, yeah, I can, I can try to kind of pin the back, but not really, uh, whatever. Yeah. And this is bought of internet. This, this is made of uh, plastic. Yes, plastic, totally different thing. But it's also cute. It has two butterflies. So this drama in their hair department, department, they really did a lot of work. I can tell, like they designed a lot of the hair thing for specific characters and, and costumes. And it's definitely not just bought off um, a market. It probably is carefully picked and also designed at times to fit the specific requirement, so. I'm bad eyesight. Oh, D DOS. Is that the, the, the uh, Dream of Splendor is DOS. How weird. DOS. Isn't that the operating system of Microsoft a long time ago? Because before that, it's DOS and Windows and then... <laughs> no, I'm from archaic time. Um. Yeah, a lot of people keep asking the same thing, right? I've already said that no updates, okay? Um, on Joy of Life. They did say they're trying to make it this year, but not moving yet. <laughs> Dust and Dream of Sun. Dust. Dust. It's so weird when you think about Dust and Dream of Slender. How, how does that come together? Weird English translation. Anyone who's already watched the new episodes of today's Dream of Splendor, is it nice? Because I know in 2526, somebody is gonna get cut up, but not now yet. Oh, and it's so weird that WeTV, like the international version of Tencent, 
they do different trailer previews for for episodes than the Chinese ones. So on China's Tencent, it's a different version of preview than what you see on WeTV. I think it's like, why did different people edit it that? Like for what purpose? It's different. <clears throat> NIF3 will, hap will happen, but it's like looking at 23 and 24. So you have to wait at least a year and two for that to come out. They want to make it, but long time. Oh, wow. Evelyn, you're so hardworking. Is it good? <laughs> 22. 21, 22. Well, 23, 24, 25, 26 is gonna have the, uh, the blood and gore. Uh, yeah. <laughs> of the song is also DOS. <laughs> yes. Well, that's confusing. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine how ancient people actually work with long sleeves and big ones. This one is not very big. You know, it's about not even 30 centimeters. It's like a 20, between 20 and 30. But even with this, I get caught in things. Like when I move, it gets caught in handles, like on the, on the, the drawer handles, on your door handles. And I was like, yeah, this is so inconvenient. I think a, like a smaller leaf that has a smaller opening like this is so much more considerate <laughs> of life. But then again, in ancient times, there's no handles, you know, like they don't have door handles. So that explains why they can wear this and be fine. Like in, in current like life, it's just unbelievably hard when you have handles in your house and you wear this. Looking for trouble. Silverfish pocket. Okay, silverfish pocket is something that the officials can wear and you have to have a level of ranks to be able to get that. Um, going up from five, so one to nine, the pin, the level. One is the highest, nine is the lowest. And then there's like formal and then tong, which is, it has the proper that level and then the vice that level of different dynasties. Yiping is the highest, usually like premier of the country. And it goes down, 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 down. You're like at the lowest guan official ranking, you're nine. So you have to be five and above in Song Dynasty, I think, to have the silver fish thing that you wear on your belt. It's like a, it's like an identification thing. Like you have that, ooh, you know, you're at that rank. People can tell. And then you have to be at three and above. So one, two, three. Only those three ranks of the officials can have the golden fish pocket. That's a Tang Dynasty thing too, I think. Song and Tang. So Gu Qianfan at year 30 is already like, oh, <laughs> he, got a, he got a silver one. And he's gonna get raised again at the end of 26, I think episode 26, after he got beaten up. Um, <laughs> he's, gonna, he's gonna go up again. Guan Yun Heng Tong. So that scene when they're on the bridge, she asked, who is ugly? And he said, I'm ugly, I'm ugly. That moment, when Chen Xiao, when Chen Xiao was like, it's me, I'm ugly. I think it probably is an improvised moment where they're on the brink of breaking it. Like, it looks so much like him. It doesn't look like a character. It looks like Chen Xiao himself. It acts pretty much like Chen Xiao's. When you see him in interviews, sometimes he's like that. And it's not, like, he's almost out of the character. I think that's a, that's a moment on the brink of turning into a gag reel and they just kept it there. It, it just looks so like on the brink of giving up. <laughs> They're about to just like give up this shot. Let's just do another take. It, it looks like that. There are a couple of scenes in this drama that looks like they literally are gag reel and they kept it still, but on the brink of just breaking the fourth wall.
Is it possible for non Chinese to work with no experience? Very hard. Very hard. But then, not impossible. One thing is you have to first have the right entry point. So I've known a person who is American who worked in Chinese film industry extensively. His story is first he's American, he studied Japanese, he in, he was in Japan for years. Uh, learning. He likes cinematography. So he's a cinematography enthusiast and he does a lot of filming on himself. Like guys, you know, when they go into gears, they just like, there's endless things they can work on. And then he moved to China and learned Chinese and learned Chinese very well to the point he can converse like a Chinese person, which is talent. <laughs> this guy, yeah, uh, he's probably now still in, he, he moved back to the States a long time ago, but I, I used to, I, I met him on a set. Anyway, so he then moved to China, learned Chinese, and he can converse perfectly. And then because he already had some work experience in filming, and he just happened to, I guess, got into the circle where he became the apprentice of a cinematographer, uh, a Chinese cinematographer, and worked with this guy as assistant for years, going on different productions, shooting stuff, and he is in charge of... a. When I met him, he was in charge of exchanging, like in charge of the, because uh, they still use a film camera back then and you have to do, like he is in charge of the part where you take the reel off the camera and put it into the double, double layer dark pocket and you do it blind of changing the film and then taking it out, seal it and then, and then take it out and then ship it to a developer. And he does that, which is super cool. Every time, like when they take a reel off, he, he would be doing that. But obviously he worked on other things along the uh, camera person. So he was the assistant of the DP for a long time until he starts to do his own stuff. And then he moved back to the US. Um, I think he married a Chinese girl. So, so anyway, like that's possible. But you see like that guy's trajectory is also quite meandering. And it also depends on whether first you are talented, right? If you're talented in that, you, you, you're probably, and then you definitely have to break the language barrier. And then you have to be hardworking. And also you have to be physically strong because doing film is extremely grueling in China. If you can't stand 16 hours long, 18 hours long days for weeks and weeks nonstop, you can't do this job. So if like, just think like if you have to only sleep like six hours a day for two months, not even one day off. And during the day you're doing hard labor, exhausting job, whether the weather is hot or cold or rainy or whatever, you have to be able to out, be out there and perform. Think about that. If you can do that, you can do the job. If you can't, it's hard. This industry is hard. It's hard everywhere, but in China, it's even more under-regulated. So if you want to think about like, I want the two days off every week, you know, five day working week, dream on, <laughs> does not exist in this industry. Okay, we're pretty much, uh... We should stop this soon. <clears throat> Anything else that I missed? Uh, let me just look at the chat. Sesame official. <laughs> Somebody knows that. Hey. Okay, I think we're at the end of the thing. Thank you for everybody who's joined this live stream. We kind of didn't say much about things, but then we said a lot about different things. I have given up time coding my live stream afterwards just because every time I try to do that, I say, I have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> it just goes everywhere. How am I supposed to time code it? Uh, yuanfen. Okay, yuanfen. If you have the yuanfen to have seen this, it's your yuanfen. If not, whatever. Random information floating on the internet. <clears throat> so, thanks for everyone who's been here. And take care. I'll see you when I see you in my next videos and videos and videos. Yeah. Uh, let, let's hope we get to see more pretty faces who can act on, on screen. Okay, like we don't want 
like no high high requirement just like pretty people looking good and act okay pray for that pray for that <laughs> so, uh, what is the uh, uh let me think the song dynasty the song dynasty gesture greeting but also yeah saying goodbye take care